Welcome back to Heroes Next Door. Thank you for joining us. Today we traveled up northern Michigan. We we're just outside of Traverse City. We're at the Leland Township Fire Rescue. Let's go see what they have. We're going to be walking into uh, their side entrance, which is their main entrance off the front of the engine bay here. We're going to be meeting up with one of their firefighter EMTs. Uh, Zorn actually reached out to us over a year ago, got us on the schedule, uh, and we're happy to be up here. Took us a little bit, a little over 13 hours to get here. I'm excited to go see what they have inside. So as I come into the building, we're going to meet up with their firefighter EMT, Zorn, right? Yep. Nice to meet you. Thanks nice for meet inviting you, us out. Yeah, of course. It's been a while uh, of communication to get this thing scheduled. But we finally made it. Yeah, so. it's been almost a year since you know, contacted you. Yeah, so it's a beautiful awesome. ride on up here. Can mm -hmm. you tell us kind of where you're at in Western Michigan? Yeah, so we're in Leelanau County, so Northwest Michigan. We're right in the center of Leelanau County right now in, in Leland Township. Okay. Um, and here we have uh, the village of Lake Leelanau, and then we have the village of Leland, uh, which is north of us. Okay. What are some of the attractions that bring people up this way? Yeah, so we have um, Fishtown in Leland, which is a historical landmark, big tourist spot um, that lots of people go to. Every summer, uh, it gets incredibly packed uh, for such a small town. And then um, we have clay cliffs and some other natural areas, um, conservancies and protected areas that people like to hike and go to a lot. Awesome, so. awesome. So you have this station, but we also have another station in Leland, uh, in Leland right? So yep. we're gonna see both stations, mm -hmm. but let's start with this station. Can you show yep. me what you have? Yeah, of course, let's All go. Right. So this is our uh, classroom or uh, training room. Wow, this is um, big too. Yeah, it's a very large space. Um, we have training uh, two or three times a month. And yeah, this is a space that we can use for What do you have back here? This is a, looks like a house that you're gonna burn? Yeah, so it's a training uh, structure that our captain uh, built. He likes to build all kinds of training structures and things like that, so. Right. This has different, um, like levers and, and floors that you can open to see what kind of goes on inside a structure as it's burning and what ventilation does to that structure. Did so. you have to buy this? Your captain made this, right? Yeah, so this is all recycled material. Okay. Um, and this is actually a glass from a garage door that I uh, got backed into. So okay. it's all reused stuff. Uh, he loves he loves building stuff. One like of the that, things so. that we always touch on is, you know, many of us firemen and EMS and police, we're jack of all trades. Mm -hmm, so, you know, having a professional that can, you know, build woodwork or do metal work is very important for the firehouse to uh, function properly and get a lot of the things that we normally, you, th you spend a lot of money to try to get a training um, mm -hmm. module like this, mm -hmm. you guys are able to make it. Yeah, and we like to do all kinds of stuff. Um, we like to try and do as much in-house as possible. So um, other than like major maintenance on trucks and stuff, pretty much everything's done in-house. So okay. That's pretty okay. awesome. So how, about how many uh, firefighters do you have? Uh, so we have, I guess, 28 total. So okay. I'm not too good at math, but. Are you a combination station? Do you do volunteers and paid staff? Yeah, so we're, we're a combination department. Um, we have, I guess you could call, you know, paid on call or part-time people that either fill shifts or they show up um, from wherever they're at and come and bring trucks to the scene. So. Okay, okay. And have you always been paid on staff or is that a recent transition? Yeah, it's, I guess, somewhat recent. Uh, in the past 10 years or so, uh, we transitioned from a volunteer department and then we, at one point, we had like one full-timer and then we slowly transitioned to a, a 24 seven staffing models. So. Okay, yeah. okay. Man, so we walk right off of the training room right into your kitchen area yeah. here. Uh, and it looks like a combination kitchen, open floor plan, yeah, right. day room kind of area. Yeah. And again, we love the fire tables. We've seen yeah. a lot of these over the times. Was this made by one of your guys or was this purchased? So uh, one of the members from our volunteer department, he actually is a woodworker and he built us this table and another one over at the other station that kind of mimics it. So yeah, I noticed job. when I was walking through the door that it actually uses fire hose uh, oh, the for, the, legs. for the legs. Mm -hmm. That's a unique concept. We've seen uh, one out of Keystone Valley, they did fire hydrants. Mm -hmm. We've seen another one out of Whiteland Township in Indiana, they used ladders, mm -hmm. you know, so coming up with different ideas on how to do the feet, that's pretty cool to see. Yeah, I love that. So, and back here, do you guys have bunks or anything like that? Or just yep. the crew room? Yep, so we have, uh, oh, okay. 
uh, workout room to the right here. All right, I'll step in there real quick. Check nice little out. workout room. Yeah, it's a little, uh, we make it work. Yeah, that's you, for sure. You got your free weights, you got your dumbbells, your treadmill, and you have the window so people can see you working out. Yeah, definitely. One of the most dangerous things is putting these weight rooms into a small closet and no one see you go down. Yeah, exactly. So we have uh, two dorms, bunk rooms, and then uh, separate bathrooms for each crew member. Okay. Uh, washer, dryer. Um, this is have, nice. Yep. Okay. One dorm yeah. over here. Got a little TV, got your bunks, got your closets, everything that you need. Yep. And uh, what kind yeah, of shifts do you guys run here? So we're a 4896 schedule. Okay. Yep. Okay. So having, you know, a nice area to lay down and rest in between calls is important. Yep, definitely. About how many calls do you guys get a year? Uh, last year we did 525 and the year before that was 500. So we've been slowly, uh, you know, getting more and more calls every year. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. And now we're going to head back out to, this is the back of the building. Make sure yep. I, I got my footprint right. Mm -hmm. So we walked in kind of in the middle. That was our, your uh, reception area, your and uh, we'll crew take, office. Crew yeah. office. Went through the training room. At the back of the building here is where basically your lounge. In. Yep. And we actually have a covered porch oh. uh, on the back side here. Oh, wow, this is um, nice. I love the overhang. Yep. Big wood uh, beams and nice little fire pit to hang out. Yeah, eventually, or these stations are fairly new, built in 2016, so we haven't made full use of uh, you know, some of our spaces yet, but eventually we'd like to have, you know, picking tables and stuff out back there. Right, so. right. All right, so we're gonna make our way back through to the engine bay, right? Yep, back to the engine bay. All right. Before we make our way out in the engine bay, how do you guys raise finance around here? Yeah, so we actually have what's called the LVFD, which stands for the Leland Volunteer Fire Department. So okay. that's what the department was called before we transitioned to full-time. So when that full-time transition happened, um, the volunteer department actually turned into a nonprofit. Um, and some of our guys, you know, are on the board of that nonprofit and kind of run things. Okay. So they supplement, um, you know, if we need certain things that the township, you know, won't provide um, or aren't necessarily, you know, a necessity that we need. You okay. know, things that we want, sometimes they'll, they'll pitch in and pay for those kind of things. Okay. And then um, the LVFD has a couple different fundraising items. So these are uh, what we call fire marks. Um, usually this will be all gold lettering here. Okay. And uh, those are pretty slick. So I would yeah. take that. I would buy this from you guys to mm -hmm. help support the fire company. Yep. So if anybody's in the area and interested in helping the fire company, get a hold of one of these. Maybe you can purchase these. Mm -hmm. And I can put this up on my barn or my shed yep. uh, or on the side Front of the house or to say, yep. hey, I'm supporting the fire company. Uh, and it's a good, you know, decoration yeah. to put on my house. Yeah. And you'll see these all over town. Um, a lot of people here, you know, they're vacation homes here. And so you might see these all over the country or the state or even down in the city. I mean, right. you'll see them all over the place. It's always cool to see them. Yeah, yeah, that's awesome. Mm -hmm. uh, you also are uh, tax-based, right? Yeah, millage-based. Okay. Um, so we do some other uh, fundraising. I think COVID and, and some staffing changes kind of you know interrupted some of that. Yeah, but, did, well, across the nation. Yeah, right, so. exactly. So um, I think this year we're back up and running with a, a, another fundraiser, the Bridge Walk. Oh, um, okay down Leland. Uh, and here we kind of brushed through this. We This is where we met. Yep. And uh, can you introduce me to you guys real quick? Yep. So this is Brandon Morris. He's our uh, nice to meet you. shift commander. Thank you. Good to meet you. And James Howard, firefighter paramedic. All right. Nice Thank you. Thank you for inviting us in, guys. Yeah. Yep. And the uh, crew office, uh, we get uh, you know our work done and reports and stuff done here. Right. Something else that we've also been working on the uh, past couple of years is our pre-plan, um, you know, uh, getting our pre-plans done for, we have uh, plans for all of our commercial structures and businesses. We have some residential um, areas pre-planned and then something else that we do is we have a lot of long private drives um, that are either dirt or we can't have good access and so we pre-plan those, um, the length so we can know where to turn around, how much hose delay, when to lay it. Right. Um, so we don't show up to a house, pull in, get stuck, and then not have water supply out the back. So yeah, that, that's very important. That's a time-consuming job too. Yeah. Do you guys all kind of do that, or does your chief take care of that? How does that work? Yeah. So we kind of share the responsibility between a few of us. Um, previously, we had a, a firefighter paramedic who kind of like really started it and and got good um, a good foundation for us to kind of build off of and work on. And since then, we've 
been using Active 911 and we have a really great pre-point system now. Awesome, so. awesome. I love the mural on the wall. This reminds me of one of the ones down in Monticello in Indiana. They did something similar to this, uh, but they put it on the ceiling tiles. Mm -hmm. So, but this is a community outreach, I'm assuming, unless you guys painted that. Yeah, no. <laughs> 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 well, we're painted by members. Okay. Oh, really? Yeah. But a lot of these uh, happen in the school. school. Yeah. 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 Community is very important for every firehouse. You know, yeah. we want to make sure that we're out there in the public and they know we're here and we're ready for them yeah. for whatever they need. Of course. All right. So we're going to go into the apparatus bay, right? Yep. All right. Let's go take a look. So you get to show me around the rigs, huh? Yes, sir. All right. Thanks for doing this. Brandon. Nice to meet you. I'm Mike. Mike. All right, nice engine bay, first of all. It's nice and bright, big, yeah. clean. We like the light in here. You can do all kinds of projects. A lot of us end up working on all of our own equipment, so we don't have to send stuff out. We got a lot of guys that like to tinker and are pretty good at it. So. Right, right. Yeah, I was talking to Zorn. I mean, one of the traits of firefighters is we're jack of all trades. A lot of us are mechanics or- Master of me none. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, woodworking or whatever, so. Um, I noticed this truck here right away, as soon as I walked in, it's a truck I've never seen before. Can you explain to me what this is? So this is a portable hydrant. Um, probably come around this side to see it better. Okay. Uh, so this truck has nothing else on it, but the stuff for uh, drafting from a creek, boat launch, through the ice, uh, or off of a uh, standpipe. So okay. we have, we, we call them standpipes here. We have a uh, five inch PVC that sticks out of the ground. Okay. And we have like 10 of them in the township and you pull up to this, it's a designated spot to get water and they're all pre-planned in our active 911 that you talked with Zorn about. Yeah. So you back up to this, we pull a piece of hard suction off, we hook it up, we come over here, we put a recirculating line on, piece of two and a half, and then a piece of five inch supply hose and our tankers will come in to get filled up at that spot. Okay. So this truck will prime and pump, and it's a designated water point truck. Okay, so this, it's not a brush truck. No, this sits at the water source the okay. whole time. This is very interesting. So that pump is pretty much the same kind of pumps that you have encased in an engine. Yes, it, it's a, yeah, it's a uh, champion. It's a 1500 gallon a minute pump. Okay. With a cat 260. Okay, yeah. And then the truck itself is a, um, like a 2000 F350 okay. 450 with the uh, 73. And this truck only has 5,000 miles. <laughs> All together, 5,000 miles. Right, That's right. the only job, it's to get water. Yeah, so, it's, it's unique. It's something, that, like I said, I've never seen before. I thought when I walked in, it was a brush truck yeah, at first. That's but, what everybody thinks. Yeah, so. but it was a low rider brush truck. Yeah, <laughs> yep. But, but what do you call it again? Make sure I got it right. Hydrant. A hydrant it's our truck. Portable, portable hydrant, yep. Okay, yep. that's awesome. What else do we have up here? Uh, we have here our 2004 uh, 75 foot Pierce ladder with a um, 1500 gallon a minute pump and 500 gallons of water. Okay. Uh, this goes on our chimney fires, mutual aid, barn fires, stuff like that. So anything big, we need to get water over the top. Do you have a lot of high rises in your area? Um, we don't have very many high rises, no. Okay. Some of our mutual aid departments do. Okay. Three, four, five story, that's about it. Okay. I think five's as big as we go. Okay. So you only have one ladder for the department? Uh, one ladder for our department, There, this is one of two in the county. In the whole county? Whole county, two ladders. We have one and Glen Lake has a 110 foot one. Okay, yep. okay, that's interesting. Where I come from, pretty much every you know place is starting to get a ladder or a bucket or you know, a platform, platform or something, or something, or something yeah. like that. Yeah, yep. yeah. so um, this is kind of our pride and joy of the department. So right. this and that. Okay. And then so, you run an ambulance here. So yep. this is ALS, BLS? ALS. Okay. Um, our other truck, we have a second truck at the other station, our backup truck, and that's licensed BLS, okay. ALS upgradable. Okay. So, um, and we carry all of our gear on this truck when we go. So in here we got, we have our gear oh, okay. and an air pack. So being firefighter EMTs, you truly actually get to get off the truck and help. Once, one seeing. minute we could be on the truck on this truck and the next minute we could be running the ladder and venting her up. Okay. okay. Yeah. It's a good uh, way to do that. Not many of the ambulances around us have fire gear on it. You know, they usually just throw it on the floor or something like that. Right. But designing that into your truck is very so important. So we, the idea of that is to keep it out of the patient compartment, out of the cab. Right. So, right. 
Um, we actually, in here also, um, we carry a combi tool. Oh. So some basic rescue tools. Okay. So that's one thing that we don't have much on the East Coast, on the ambulance side of it. We, you know, have rescue teams or rescue companies that will come out and do a lot of that. You know, the only thing that we do usually carry is maybe a Halligan or an ax. We can do some very basic stuff. Yeah, yeah. But having a, a combi tool on there can be a big help. So when we're going on a accident, a vehicle accident, we're taking this, both of us, both the crew on this truck. Okay. Um, and we can at least get started until the engine until our uh, paid on call staff shows up with the engine. Right. And then we can get more advanced. But you can pop a door, you can you can start doing. Right, you can at least take the B post. Yeah. You know, if you need to get you it take out. Take an A and a B and, and you're, you're halfway there. So. <laughs> right, right. Um, yeah. This is awesome, I like to see that. I think more people should do this on their ambulance services. If they have the room, especially here in America, we have really big ambulances. Putting a, a combi tool there is important. Our new truck is going to be, uh, it's going to have a battery. The, the new tool. one. The yeah. new. Yeah, those are uh, nice. New Genesis on yeah. it. Yep. And next to that is Chief's vehicle? Uh, this is uh, our Echo, which okay. is a paramedic sprint car. Okay. So we cover two townships for the uh, department south of us. And so this has all the ALS equipment to upgrade their ambulance. Okay. Yeah. So they. Our paramedics go and they meet their BOS crew and everything in here to upgrade their truck. Okay, this is what we're very used to. You know, a Medic 94, we did a, a shoot with them. They showed us their medic truck. So this is pretty much what they had. Uh, it's good to have that. Not only as an ambulance or a backup, you got that yeah. mutual aid is important. Well, it also works good as a nice support vehicle. Yeah, yeah. So. All right, next to us is something monstrous here. So this is our rescue engine, 511. Okay. Um, this goes on all of our fire-related, fire-rescue-related calls okay. in one aspect or the other. Okay. So this truck has all of our rescue equipment. Um, this truck has all of our fire suppression stuff. Okay. All of our investigation so stuff. So would this be your primary unit that you respond Primary to? truck out the door. Okay. First truck out the door for a confirmed fire okay. or alarm. And it sounds like it's the Swiss Army knife of your department. It sure is. It's got everything and then some. Man, this is absolutely beautiful. So. so how big is it? Do you know how? So this truck is 20, 29 feet long. Okay and it's 9.9 nine tall. Do you guys require a CDL to drive these cars? Do not. Okay. Nope. I'm sure there's a driver's training aspect. There is a driver's so. training aspect. A lot of hours to log before you are cleared to. So speaking of that, this. it just kind of raised a question in my head. If I wanted to become part of your department, how would I do that? Um, so we have a Facebook page. We have a website. Okay. Yeah. So. I'll get the information for you. You know, so if you guys are in the area and you want to be part of the fire department or, you know, in Kind of or join. just stop by for a visit. Yeah. We, we love visitors. Hit, we'll so. hit the link below and uh, we'll get it there. Are you guys hiring at all? Uh, we are right now currently. What kind of requirements are required? Uh, we're Right now we're doing uh, one firefighter paramedic. So you got to have firefighter uh, and a paramedic license in the state of Michigan. Okay. Um, and also uh, hazmat te uh, ops and the oh, basic, your basic, basic stuff that you get in your fire one course. Yes, yes. So okay. Fire one and two and a paramedic license come to us. All right. We will train you the rest of the way. Awesome. So you got one more piece of apparatus back here. Yeah. So um, this is our tanker. Some call them tenders. We call them tankers in Michigan because okay. I've never seen a, a tanker okay. fly over. Okay. So this Fair truck enough. has a the 2,000-gallon uh, drop tank. That's it, what's in here. That's what's in there, yeah. Okay. Two guys to fl flip it down. Some of the newer trucks are... Uh, they got the auto load. The auto drop, yep. Okay. It has a 35-foot ladder on it and it carries 2,000 gallons of water. Okay, does this also pump too? Or? It does pump, it's got a 500 gallon a minute pump. Okay, so not big, but it can get the job It can done. fill itself up in like five minutes. Okay. So, okay. pretty quick, you can draft with this truck How too. many uh, hydrants do you have in the area? Are, are you well hydrated since you got all these waterways? Are we around? talking red dry barrel yeah. hydrant? We yeah. have one. You have and one. And it's at the school. Okay. <laughs> yep, it's, it's in the back parking lot at the high school. Okay, yep. so learning how to draft, having that other truck yep. that we talked about and you know filling these drafting papers. yeah and if you apply here we're going to teach you how to draft <laughs> day one right so and drive a tank tanker task force and drive a tanker <laughs> yes that's awesome so before we uh go on we're going to go see your other station yep. correct all right we're going to jump in the ladder 
and we're gonna go can, up to. We can ride with you. You're gonna ride with me. All right. So you guys pay attention. You're gonna get some views from inside the ladder as we go down the road. Before we do that, do us a favor. Hit subscribe. Hit notifications so we can keep bringing you more. We want to hit that hundred thousand subscriber mark before the end of the year. And with you guys' help, you can do that. Why don't we get loaded up? Let's and let's go over to the other load station. Load up. So that was an awesome ride over here, going by the lakes and seeing all the uh, attractions they have in town. This is their firehouse. This is their second firehouse in Leland. This is where their chief is. So let's go get a tour of this one too. I think Zoran's already inside. He took his personal vehicle over, so let's go meet up with him. Hey, hey. How's it going? Good, thank Long you. Long time no see. Yeah, yeah. That was an awesome ride over here. Yeah. So this is your second firehouse, right? Yep. About how far did we travel? Uh, about four miles okay. from uh, Lake Leland. Okay. And we walk right into the kitchen area. Mm -hmm. This one was built about the same time? Yeah, right around the same time, 2016, same builder. Okay. Same thing. Okay. So let's see what you have in this one. Yeah. So uh, another table uh, built by the same guy. Who, uh, okay. Yeah. The that's other one there. Same logo that you had on the other table, but a yep. round one. Yep. And then we got the classic uh, ladders uh, for feet there. Yep. Um, pretty that's much sweet. everything's almost identical right same countertops and cabinets same right. appliances big area for you yeah how many people do you uh, usually put up in crew here so uh usually it's one person and then the chief okay uh, when we're at our you know fully fully staff level sometimes in the summertime we'll have uh two people over here plus the chief okay just because we're a little busier in the okay. summer so you don't need a huge crew room but you got enough to we got enough down. to expand that's for sure right yeah. right okay um, yep mr recliners and everything and we got our dorms back here. Okay, so even though it's a smaller station, you still have dorms. So you're running yep. the same schedule as that 4896, what you were saying, right? Yep, whenever whenever it's staffed, and that's usually what happens. Okay. Um, same identical dorm rooms. Right. Um, I actually built got a those tables desktop there. Desktop tables, yeah. Yep. Homemade tables, got your TV, mm -hmm. lockers, everything you need. Yep. Really nice, really clean. Yeah, much closer to the bay than the, uh, the other stations. Right, so right. like that. So, and the chief's office is in here then too, right? Yep, chief's office is over here. Okay. We have our uh, EMS storages. Now this right I there. love to see. This is your, right. uh, you know, thank you board or mm -hmm. attaboy board. Yeah. You know, all too often, us as firefighters and EMS, we go out and do the job and it's almost a thankless job at times. You know, yes, New York firefighters, Baltimore, LA, they get the big praise, but you guys are the heroes next door and it looks like your community definitely reflects that. They're sending you attaboys, thank yous. Yeah, we're really fortunate that it, we have such support from our community and our, and our township leaders and officials. Um, we're really grateful for the support that we have. Yeah, I like that. That's awesome. good to show. Mm -hmm. right. And here is the administrative office. So this will be chief's office? Yep, chief's office is where all the important stuff gets done. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. gets the bills paid. Yep. Got the bigger mural here. Yep. This is nice. Same, uh, yeah, same project. Yeah, very nice. I love when the kids get involved. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, all too often we go to the schools and we do, you know, National Fire Safety Awareness Week, where we teach them stop, drop, and roll, and right. do that kind of stuff. Uh, and they see us, but this is a way for them to actually give back rather than us just giving them stuff. Yeah, definitely. And then uh, here, it's kind of a multi-purpose or uh, multi-purpose office. Um, our EMS coordinator was using it for a while. I mean. Just built for expansion, you know, you never know in the future what you might need. Right, right. Um, another office that's currently being used for some storage. Nice then, bright watch room here. Yeah, nice big open space. Um, place for crews to get stuff done. Right. And kind of, I don't know, this is a little bit 
busier side of our township, so we, we'll see people walking by all the time. Right, um, right. Driving up and down. I love that you're close and, and in the neighborhood, even here. I mean, your other station was too. You had mm -hmm. houses around you. But, you know, just looking across the street, guys out sun tanning, relaxing, right. you know, yeah. you are part of the neighborhood. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, that's awesome. And then uh, yeah, another storage room. And these are, you know, an example of some of the stuff that the LVFD has over here. We have t shirts, hoodies, and all can the public stuff. actually purchase these? Yeah, definitely. Okay. And what's the all, what's the best way to get a hold if they wanted to purchase? Face, our Facebook page always works, and then you can always just call the station. Okay. Um, we all kind of know the drill and who to talk to and how to how to get you what you want. Okay. Because so. your guys are going to be shown nationally, right. internationally. So you know, if you guys are out there and you want some merchandise, these are some awesome hats. Uh, definitely hit them up and get yourself a hat. Uh, maybe I'll pick one up before I leave. Yeah, sounds good. All right. And uh, out here we have a little display case. You know, from the East Coast, we have a lot of history. We got fire stations that are built back in the 1700s and stuff right. like that. And we've built up that history and we have a lot of that memorabilia. But as a newer station, this has only been a, a station since 2016. 2016. Yeah. It's hard to get those. So, you know, the fact that you already started, you're starting a foundation uh, for the next generations and the generations after that to build. I guarantee you in another 50 years from now, this thing's gonna be full of memorabilia for people to come right. in and see. That's the goal, right? Yep. Definitely. So Once see, again, yeah. this is an awesome apparatus bay. It's absolutely bright, huge. This is clean. where a lot of our big projects take place. Okay. All of our big woodworking, this is where our training props get built. And uh, a fair amount of our training happens up here. Okay. We st usually start in the training room over there. We do a little class time thing. Right. Uh, we always start out with the Pledge of Allegiance and a moment of silence. Perfect. Uh, just kind of honors those who have fallen before us. So yep. it's it's just our quick second to remember what we're training for and why we're doing it. Okay. <clears throat> well, we appreciate that for sure. So, so, got another ambulance. This is our secondary ambulance. This is a 2014. This truck usually goes into service about December. Okay. When we start getting fair bit of snow and ice on the road. So this actually turns into our primary truck. Okay, that makes uh, sense. I mean, here in Michigan, you're in Northern Michigan, yep. you get quite a bit of snow. And this truck's set up the same, so the air pack and the combi tool and some of the hand tools come off that truck and go on this truck. Okay. So, um, and the new that truck's got a few more bells and whistles than this has. This right. is pretty plain Jane. This is our um, other engine. You consider this an engine? Yes, sir. Okay. It's got a full complement of ladders. Okay. Full complement of all the hose. It's got two packs, the camera, all the stuff. Right. I would consider, you know, we're initially looking at it like, oh, this is your brush truck or a utility truck. Yeah. But you guys can classify it as an engine. That's so pretty slick. We have a few driveways north of town that are marked and south of town that are marked that this truck needs to be there first. Okay. To get in there because it's, it's skinny. Right. So. Yeah. That's pretty <clears> slick to see. Uh, saws, fans, um, some vehicle stabilization stuff, no extrication tools. Okay. Um, and this truck can also be a tow vehicle. Okay. Did you got a UTV? Yep. The, the mule or what kind is That's that? That's a gator. Gator, okay. Yep, and that has a, a little brush skid in it and uh, the Stokes basket. Right, right. So just it drops right just on. drops right onto this and we're gone. Okay. So. Yeah. This truck carries 500 gallons of water. This truck has a 1250 pump on it. Um, it's amazing you can fit that in such a small unit. It's a good. So then I think back, I was like, why are we doing such big fire trucks if you can do that with such a little fire truck? Well, uh, sometimes you need to carry all the tools, but you just you need the water too. So this truck is was purchased just for the small driveway stuff. Right. And long, windy, twisty stuff. So it's a very specific tool. It so. is a handy tool. Right. <laughs> so. This looks like a twin. Over here is the twin. Same year, same model, same pump, same tank, same everything. Wow. Everything on this truck is identical to the other one. Okay. And again, that's because you guys don't have hydrants. We have that one Correct. that we talked about. We have the one behind the school. All that's right. all we have. And then back here, we have our brush truck. This has a 300 gallon tank on it and a, just a small brush pump. Right. And a lot of this skid unit was custom built by guys that work here. Okay. It's all custom. The hose, this hose bed 
is all custom. Our assistant chief's a pretty good welder of aluminum. Yeah. So he built this. So we did one like this at Twin Valley where they actually, you know, cut the tailgate and put the whole thing on. Again, it amazes me, and I want to encourage those people that have these kind of skill sets, that fire departments need those kind of people. Whether you volunteer or you get into the fire service, this is the kind of thing that helps you survive as a fire department. Well, everybody's got, there's always more than one way to skin the cat, so right. to say. So um, everybody brings their ideas to the table, and we figure out what we think is going to work best, and we act on it. Right, so, right. Um, we have our snowmobile oh. for the winter time. Okay, a little ski do. Yep. Right. Um, and then we have the sled fort behind it, tucked away in storage. So but far, I think you're the first station that we had to go to, that we've gone to, that needed a snowmobile and we've for the snow. And we've used it. Right. So uh, this is that dry rack I was oh, telling yeah, you about. Yeah. Okay. So on our engine, we have the trays, the twins to, to these. All right. So, so you just pick this up. You just pick it up slide over, it over the lip. Yep. And slide it. In back into the engine, make your connection, and we're back in service. Swap the nozzle out, and we're good to go. That way, I think you know this might be one of those uh, tricks of the trade, or uh, yeah, and life life hacks. That yeah, they right. Out. A little DIY. <laughs> yeah. Um, so we made it work for us. We have that for hanging hose on. Sure. But we didn't have a good way to store the hose. Okay. So we built this to accommodate what we. Need right. to store and it's on caster so you can slide it right up and in and yeah. change it out every now and then we pull the old basketball hoop out <laughs> back and have a little friendly competition so does this area have any kind of fitness or all your fitness back all our fitness is back at lake leelanaut uh the schools actually let us use the gym in the winter time okay so usually once a shift or once a, on a weekend when the school doesn't have anything going they allow us to use our keys to go get in the school we can open up the gym that way to go play some three on three or right. whatever. So be part of the community. Yeah. Last but not least, you saw a boat over here. Yes. Um, Do you guys cover Lake Michigan? We used to. Um, our boat is a little small for Lake Michigan. Okay. So what bodies of water are around here that you would not cover with it? So we cover all of North Lake Leelanau. Okay. We cover part of South Lake Leelanau and we mutually aid with Cedar. Okay. So we'll go all the way down to the Cedar River with this boat if we have to. Uh, Sutton's Bay has called us, uh, Grand Traverse Band over in Omina. Right, right. Um, So there's four boats in the county. This is one of four boats in the county. Okay. Uh, this used to have suppression stuff on it and it kind of just got phased out over time. So it's more of like a rescue, like for going and making a quick pick. Okay. We don't have the stuff to do big searches, big oriented searches. Okay. Um, over big water. We don't have all the electronics, the side imaging, down imaging, the FLIR, we don't have that stuff. Okay. What we can see is what we can get. So it's a, Again, a useful tool. In Michigan, one of the things that I've always been told that if you travel a mile in one direction, just as straight as an arrow, you're gonna hit somebody. You're gonna hit water. You're gonna hit water yep. somewhere. So you're yep. gonna need some way to, to go into those places, so. Exactly, so um, it takes quite the crew to run, be able to run the boat, because we have to keep the ambulance staffed as much as we can. Right. So if this is going in the water, we depend on a lot of our paid on call people to help us either A, cover the ambulance, or B, become, roll into a boat crew member. But we try to keep our full, one of our full timers in a boat operator position. Okay. So thank you very much for showing us yeah. around. We appreciate Not it. Not a problem. So once again, this is Heroes Next Door. This is Station Cribs. We're at the Leland Fire Rescue. Uh, did Leland, I say that right? Yes, sir. Leland Township Fire Rescue. Thank you all for watching. Do us a favor, hit subscribe, hit notification so we can keep bringing you more. Also, hit up our uh, merchandise site. Help support us so we can keep coming to see you guys. It's uh, watchheroesnextdoor.com. Get yourself some merchandise, and we'll see you again next week.